Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here, I'm L'Oreal. Today we are doing a refresh of my little makeup pouch. If you are new here, then you can just think of this as a shop my stash, get ready with me. I really love doing these once in a while and if you are not new here, then you will know that my life has been topsy-turvy since operating this nail shop, working full time. Um, I just can't get ready where I typically would get ready at my vanity, which is here. Um, and now I gotta get ready in a different section of my room. So what I do is I pull out some makeup that I wanna use and and seasonally I'll just kind of like work through it until I get bored and then I ideally come here and I talk about how it went and refreshing it so um, let's jump into it and you can see how I got this look and the products that I'll be using for the next few weeks hi here I am with my bare face I actually had the wherewithal to put sunscreen on my face before we are beginning before filming is that what I'm trying to say before filming? I wanted to talk about my new um, Shop My Stash basket. So it's a little full this time. It's been probably a month since my last Shop My Stash and things have come and gone. I'm sorry, I would have shown you uh, what I was moving in and out, but time got away from me. Before we actually start, I wanna show you this mug that I got. Very apropos for spring, but now we're already moving into summer. And I thought this was like a fun, like African um, bird of paradise situation, but actually, these are gnomes, <laughs> I didn't realize. So yeah, that's kind of weird. First thing in my Shop My Stash is going to be the Mint Melt Sculpting, uh, sorry, Cooling Face Primer. I'm picking this over the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, put, putty, putty Primer, because it's cooling and we're, the temperature is going up. That being said, it's also going up and going down. It's very, very bizarre. Some days it's like 90 degrees, 95 degrees, and then some days it's like 70 degrees. So. I don't know what in the hell is going on with the weather, but I do know that um, no matter what a nice sticky base to keep the makeup on my skin is always going to be well appreciated. So this stuff is really, really sticky. I don't know if you can see, but it's very like bouncy on the skin. I'm pretty sure this is the same thing as the Jelly Pop Primer, just green. And no, it's not green enough to actually counteract the redness. I just want to show you like how light my chest is compared to my neck. And so... Whenever I do makeup, I always match my face to my neck area, and here you can see my skin is actually still pretty tan, and then you get down to the rest of my body, and it's like, oh god, I'm blinded um, by the color of your skin, because it's so, like, pale and kind of, like, translucent almost. I got this sponge free with a gift with purchase, as a gift with purchase, so I'm going to go wet this, because I forgot to, but I'll be right back. Also, my hair is purple now. So while um, I'm filming this, I'm waiting on a hair appointment to get my roots done because my roots are grown out, um, which wouldn't look so bad against the purple had they not put a band of like really unprocessed blonde here. But whatever, I'm trying to get through to the salon. I kind of want to do like pink roots and then purple ends, but I don't know how that's going to work out. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk um, base products because there's a few... Ooh, I almost dropped my new Charlotte Tilbury bronzer, and that would have been very, very devastating. I have a new favorite face combo that I've been using, and it is the Clay de Peau Radiant Fluid Foundation Matte and the It Cosmetics CC Cream. I am trying to polish off my makeup, guys, because I saw a Jessica Braun, vid Braun video the other day where she was like, I have makeup sitting in my uh, vanity or my storage from like pre-pandemic, like 2018, 2019, 2020, and it's time for me to pack those things up and say goodbye to them. Guys, I had makeup from my college days, Ugh. so I did a brutal declutter of most products. Some products were a bit pricey, like said Clay de Peau foundation, so I held on to them but I'm desperately trying to use them up quickly. So that's what we're doing these days, is we're trying to use up the products that I didn't have, the um, the foresight to prioritize in terms of oldest to newest. And I feel like we as makeup enthusiasts tend to be overzealous in our purchasing, especially for products that like do go bad, you know? Cream products go bad quickly, and I think we kind of know that, but also so do powder products. They just don't go bad as quickly. Um, so they still need to be used up. I have powder products that have been sitting there literally for like five, six years, and I was like, oh, they're powder products, they don't go bad. No, they don't go bad as fast, but they still go bad, sis. So, um, look forward. I think the video I'm going to film right after this will be the showing of the things that I decluttered. Not in a, it's always good to declutter makeup after like buying and using, because I actually am very, very ashamed of how much stuff like I just purchased. And I'll, I'll talk about it in that video, like we'll go into 
why it's good to let go of things instead of holding on to them in like a shame based fear based way because I think that's part of the conversation the other part of the conversation is like you just can't be putting things on your face that are like four or five six years old it's just not safe I think I mean I, I am um, getting to a point where the acne on my skin is getting kind of mixed in with sun damage and I actually can't even tell what is sun damage and what is adult acne because I just don't take any of it seriously and I don't know if it's the makeup, I don't know if it's a lack of serious skincare routine, but I am um, going to try to be more devoted to making myself more wary of what's going on on my face because it just seems really unhealthy for me to buy something on ColourPop for, you know, like a place of $60 ColourPop order, get like 12 different things in that order because all of it is on clearance because probably all of it has been sitting for quite a while and then leaving it for three years, putting it on my face and then wondering why I have adult acne still. So, um... I'm gonna try mm, to go through that video. It's gonna be the thing I film next. Hopefully it will go well and I won't feel too much shame and too bad about it. Um, but in any case, let's talk about this base. I really like it. I used a lot of foundation. Probably I could have done one pump of each, but I didn't because I was overzealous. And I don't know why, but next time I'm just gonna do one pump of each, but I think the color actually looks really, really good. Finish, a little bit dewier than I would like. So part of what I kind of was thinking is maybe instead of using the... CC cream. I could mix it with the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation because the colors seem similar. But the problem is this one is in a squeeze bottle and you can never really precisely measure out squeeze bottles. And I'm so close to panning this. So I, I, I think I just, I'm going to tough it out, use it up, and let's just set the face to kind of um, get rid of this like excess shine. The problem with the excess shine though is that the other day I did set my face and then the blush didn't sit on my face nicely. So actually, let me let me do myself a favor and conceal first. This is the Maybelline Studio Superstay, blah blah blah. What is this? St Superstay Active Wear Concealer. I really like this one because it's very thin. And you may have recalled that I owned it in a different shade. What was the previous shade? I had it in 22, and I purchased it again in 11 because 22 is darker than my actual skin tone. Um, in the bottles they look the same they look almost identical so this is 22 i don't know what i was thinking that's definitely way too dark for me and this is 11 which is a little bit lighter than my skin tone but it works really well as an under eye brightening shade so i have really been enjoying that i'm gonna try to tap it in with a brush because my sponge fell on the floor and i don't want to put that back on my face see it's it's these things if I wasn't filming, honestly, I would have picked that up from the ground and put it directly under my eye area and been like, what is happening? Why do I have under eye, uh, you know, like irritation? Or why is my eye red? Or why am I itchy? Like, girl, it's because you're doing gross stuff like that. I'm just going to set my eyes with the number seven powder, but literally just my eyes because then we're going to go underneath the eyes with a little bit of powder. I don't really have creasing under the eyes. So that's not really what I'm worried about, but I am worried about things not blending well afterwards. Okay, let's talk about the rest of the makeup um, pouch. I kind of want to do skin first, like, because I found that part of my routine is doing the base with a face. Going from base and then to face, so like cheeks, forehead, that kind of thing, and then sealing everything in with setting spray and then going in with, with eye products. So picked up the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. I got it the day it released. Yes, I did. Um, not because I was really keeping up with makeup releases, but actually because I think I happened to want to get something from Sephora that day, and this was on the main page, and I saw that the fair had already sold out online, and it looked like a really good tone. I really like Charlotte Tilbury's bronzers. I've actually panned. The only two bronzers I've ever panned were Charlotte Tilbury products because they don't go too orange, so this one also looked not too orange. It reminds me a little bit of Bahama Mama, but like lighter, if you remember that from the good old days of YouTube. It's giving me a little bit of what I think the Chanel bronzer was supposed to be. Like, it's a, a really workable like gel cream formula. It's not super creamy, like not super emollient. I don't think it's like the level of the say cream bronzer, but it is, I don't know if you can see like when I tap into the pan, you can see like definitely there's like indents a little bit. Really, really beautiful product. I love the packaging like always. And it's not the dinky kind of plastic packaging. I think there's two types of luxury makeup packaging. Some of it looks really kind of crappy and bad, and then some of it is actually quite nice, and I think this is the nicer one. The other bronzer I have to set it with is the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. This was $10 at CVS, no, $10 at Marshalls, sorry. 
and again, this is a tone that I really like. I also like the Sweet Tea Bronzer from Too Faced. I refuse to get rid of it, even though that stuff is definitely five years old. <laughs> it's old, but um, what can I say? I really like it, and I am not going to give it up. So these two products so far have been really, really nice. I'm keeping these in the stash for now. For cheeks, um, for highlight, I'm going to use the Becca Pearl Glow Highlight. I also picked this up at TJ Maxx for... I think $10.99, $11.99. It was not very expensive at all. And I didn't swatch it until I got home and I found that this is really, really gorgeous. Still don't understand the Becca nipple situation. Like, why are we doing this? It's kind of, I don't know, looks like a lactating breast. But I really, really like this color. And every time I see this color, it reminds me of Lauren May Beauty. I don't know, was this the one that she said she bought that was limited edition? I feel like that was Berlin Glow. But no matter what, this is the only Becca highlighter that I own that is a color that I like. It's kind of pearly, pinky, champagne color. Very universally flattering, at least for my skin tone range. Not that you can get it anymore. I'm just letting you know that that is <laughs> what I got and what I'm putting in my stash. I'm not surprised that Becca went out of business, though, because my husband was really surprised. He was like, what? Becca's going out of business. And I'm like, yeah, they only had, like, one standout product. I don't know. I mean, maybe they had more, but I personally was not invested in them. Okay, next we've got this Dior... Um, Backstage Blush. This is in Rosy Glow. It's really, really pale. I'm not that dark, um, but I find that it's a little bit ashy on me, and if it's ashy on me, I don't know who this is for because, I mean, I'm not even, like, a medium skin tone. I'm very much so squarely in the light skin tone range, but, like, if you look at this on my skin, it looks really powdery. Like, it looks, um, not bad, but it doesn't look good. I'll say that much. It doesn't look good. And also it has like a pearlescent sheen, but it looks chalky. This looks worse than my ColourPop blushes. This looks worse than my, um, my ColourPop blushes. And I was thinking of something else. Oh, e.l.f. Because I really like the e.l.f. shimmer infused blush. And so just to try this product out, I'm leaving it in my kit. But I also brought this as a backup. This is the Always Silly blush and I really like this product. I was going to declutter these blushes because they are really really old. They are probably four years old at this point um, and I had not conceived of them as old products because I, I think of them as still like a relatively new release. I don't know maybe I have like a weird time scale for makeup um, but anything that's like <laughs> I don't know I don't know like now when I say it out loud like yes this is definitely not a new product but I don't see it as a super old product and so I was going to keep uh, throw them out um, but they still work really well so they don't smell weird yeah, they don't smell weird. They don't apply patchy. I think that's another, like, telltale sign that it's kind of time to go. Something probably has broken up or something like that. But they still function super well. So keeping that. And then let me just buff. So that is the skin all done. For setting spray, I think I have... Yeah, this is the Fruit Fetish Dragon Fruit Spray. I love this one. It smells so good. And I also got this one at TJ Maxx for $3.99, and so I picked up two. So I got this one and this one. By the way, these are not all, like, current purchases. Some of them have been older. I have been away from YouTube. I mean, not away away, but, like, I have not been on YouTube consistently the way I would like to be in a long time. So when I say I buy all my makeup from TJ Maxx, it's because I just, one, I don't have the wherewithal to go to Sephora and buy everything there. And two, the interest is just not there anymore. Usually I'm buying stuff for my shop at TJ Maxx, and then on a completely unrelated note, I'll be like walking around the personal care aisle, and I'm like, oh, let's see what's going on over there, and I do, and I pick something up. But I just have not been super, super into makeup these days. For lips, I'm using the um, Sienna Lip Clay. I'm pretty much getting rid of a lot of stuff. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm pretty much getting rid of a lot of stuff. I think I had to say goodbye to my Superstay inks, which is so sad because you remember that was my favorite product for a long time. I still think they're amazing, but lip products, those are one of the things that I have been trying to avoid for so long, decluttering, but, you know, they go directly on our rounds and then directly into our <laughs> digestive systems and, like, into our bodies, and so I feel like even beyond, like, eyeliner and skincare and hair care, which kind of, like, sits on stuff, the lip products are going into your body, so <laughs> I pretty much said bye to everything that I didn't purchase within the last two years and then the lip glaze, which, honestly, it's already been a year almost, so... <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how time flies. Like, we, I think kind of become immune to how gross our habits are. I don't know. Maybe to other people it's not gross how 
long leaky things, but when I think about it too long, I'm like, ugh, why have I been holding on to this stuff? It's time to go. I am also going to dab a little bit of this Milani, what is this? The shiny lip bullet. This is in the shade 190 Covet. And I'm just going to put a teeny tiny bit in the center of my lip for that bitten popsicle glow. Because it's summer, and I feel like I don't have to have like one or the other. You know, it's not like I have a shiny lip or a matte lip. You can kind of mix them and do like a demi-matte situation. I think that's fine too. And I do want to mention that I keep some lip products in my purse. I don't know which ones are in my purse right now, but they kind of just rotate out. It's probably like a Charlotte Tilbury color, like a rosy nude and probably like a pinky gloss, something like that. Um, and also we're wearing masks these days, so mm, you win some, you lose some. Too Faced Let's Play palette, frankly, because uh, it's a small makeup pouch, okay, and I couldn't fit that much in here, so that's why we're using this. Um, but this is a really, really easy kind of, you know, work, work appropriate um, palette. But today we're going to go for pink because I watched a pony makeup tutorial the other day. She's been uploading a lot. I feel like she doesn't always upload that much. Um, depending on, I guess, like her work schedule and what she's up to. But recently, I feel like she's been uploading more than usual, and I have been consuming more than usual. So I've really, really enjoyed the uptick in her content. And recently, she did a like e girl inspired pink makeup look, and I thought that was really, really cute. So, not that this is a recreation of that look, but it is kind of a wearable pink eye. I often find that, like, for pink eyes, Oftentimes people set it up like the crease is brown and then the lid is pink. I think today I want to do the opposite situation where I do pink around the eyes and then brown on the lid. Just to mix things up a little bit. The other technique that she used was leaving a gap in the outer corner, which I don't typically do. Usually I connect this area, like if I have eyeshadow and it's the same color top and bottom, usually I will connect them in this little C-shape right here but I think today maybe we will try what she did and it really opened up her eyes so I'm gonna try the same thing let's actually do the rest of the eye before I conceal let's try a rosy brown in the outer corner oh ooh, ooh, I forgot I put the utopian dream palette on the side expressly for this purpose because I remember that even though it doesn't fit in my bag it does in fact fit on my table so I'm gonna put just a little bit of that like dark brown in the Lower lash line in the outer V. Again, avoiding this exact outer lash line corner. And then I think I'll just take my finger. I'm just gonna take my finger and go to that Venusian orchid shade, whatever that multi-chrome color is. This color is still so stunning. Sorry, if I've been looking into the viewfinder, I'm so sorry. It's been a while since I've filmed like anything, even nail products, because I have not really been on my grind for making content for my nails either. It's been a struggle. We're finishing the school year um, and I'm still trying to figure out like how to let everyone know that I'm leaving. So yeah, I don't know. A lot of my students are transient anyway, so like they're not going to see me. Like for most students like, in different grade levels, like they don't see their teachers next year. But if you're an ESL teacher, um, oftentimes you do kind of like raise kids. <laughs> like they stay with you until they are fluent. Granted, that being said, our program is pretty quick, so we don't really have a long stay for the most part. But that doesn't mean that it's not kind of like sad, you know, when they're they're departing or they're leaving. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I tried to cut the corners of my eyes. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Honestly, I feel like this could be a hot mess. And then let's do eyeliner. Ooh, I picked up this kit. I think this was a holiday kit, but it comes with a nice little like plot, uh, paper box and six, count them, six full-sized Stila pencil liners, which is like amazing. And you won't believe how much this cost me. It cost me 20 bucks. 20 bucks for six full-size liners. I'm pretty sure during the holiday season, they sell these for like $50. And $50 for six eyeliners is still a good deal. So the fact that I got them for 20, I mean, that is, I have no words to say besides Oh my god, that is amazing. So I'm just going to put a champagne color in my lash line. Did that do anything? I don't believe it did, but whatever. We say we did it. And then I want to do the actual like lower lash line. So I think I'm just going to darken a tiny bit. Like right below my lash line, just so it looks real. And then I'm going to do the actual wing liner. I think I mentioned this in a Project Pan video. But pencil liner is actually more worth it for me than liquid liner. 
I don't know if it's the liquid liner that I'm buying, which is the Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Liner, but I go through one of those every like two weeks, maybe three weeks. The pencil liners, however, stay in my project pan for like six months. The only issue is that they're not super precise. But if that means that I can save hundreds of dollars on eyeliner every year, I'll take it. I'll take the slightly smudgier, messier eyeliner look for a cheaper outcome overall. So that was the espresso. This is technically deep burgundy. And then I'm going to go um, right back on the lash line with Stingray, which is that black one. And I'm just going to go like closest to my lash line with Stingray. Also, weirdly enough, I find that pencil eyeliner is the easiest to get into your inner corner. I don't know why you'd think that it would be smudgy, or I, I at least always thought that it would be smudgy on the lower lash line, um, and especially in the inner corner, but I think there's something about that like budge-proof nature, like it doesn't stay watery, that makes it really suitable for that area. Um, I find that liquid liner in this inner corner, sometimes when I get watery eyes, it just kind of spreads everywhere, and it, you know, it's like watercolor, it just like, leaks out. Mascara, this is what I always use. This is the Lash Princess. It's just my tried and true. I love the It Cosmetics Superhero, but that stuff is like $20. You can always get it on a sale. I think I might buy like six on Black Friday because it's it's doable. Like you can get it for a drugstore price range. I think you can get it down to $10, maybe a little bit less, depending on the bundle you get. But um yeah, if you're not if you're not getting it at a bundle deal. Listen, I'm willing to take the short lashes. I don't really have that great natural lashes anyway. Like if you're working with nice long lashes and you're the kind of person who can do just mascara and it makes a difference and it wakes you up, then by all means, go for that. But for me, that's not the case. For actual lashes, I got these lashes from a product swap. Um, this is t the Taylor Beauty Made Lashes, the made service application. But um, they are <laughs> really big. Like almost comically large. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut them into smaller pieces and then use them piece by piece. Taylor, sorry if this is not the way that your lashes were intended to be used, but um, on the small hooded Asian lashes, like those big lashes are just not going to work. So I am snipping them into little pieces. And the thing with this lash is that they're kind of the same length all the way through. It's not like the front is short and wispy and then the middle gets long and then the end is wispy again. It's kind of like one big eyelash. So I think for that reason, I'm going to have to go a little bit smaller. Let's see if I brought my lash glue over here. By the way, I haven't tried this, so I don't know if it's gonna look good or if it's gonna look terrible. Well, too late to back out now. These are kind of large lashes. I always feel bad cutting these like really nice big lashes because I know the production cost of like the big fluffy foam ink lashes is actually obviously more expensive than the natural lashes. But at the same time, I feel like these big lashes really only work for some people. And even on those some people, I feel like it's an acquired taste and it does kind of overwhelm the eyes a bit to the point where instead of opening the eyes up, it actually makes you look a little bit sleepy. That just might be a personal preference and again, I don't like the idea of like judging the way people do their makeup because if someone judged me for my makeup, I would be like, I didn't ask you. It's not an opinion that I care about. So maybe people with like the really, really big eyelashes are coming from that same camp. So if you are someone who enjoys a really big fat mink lash or like, you know, this kind of over the top lash look, do let me know. Like I like this PC look um, and I'm well aware that it's, it's like not a very <laughs> realistic lash aesthetic. But for me, I don't mind. So maybe it's the same thing for someone who has like the really, really big full on strip lashes. That being said, to make these lashes work, I think it took like five or six minutes just to apply these. Um, and I would never do this again. This is like way too much work. Um, these are not going in the spring makeup basket. I just wanted to put on some lashes because I'm filming today. And ideally, I would be able to film some content for my, not my TikTok, my reels. Um, but I don't know how it's going to happen if uh, if I don't really like the way my brows are looking right now. Filling in my brows with a random powder. This one is coming from the Viseart Petite Smoky. I think it's the Etoile palette, but I pretty much use whatever is within reach. It's not a very elegant solution, and sometimes my brows come out slightly weird colors, but on camera, who knows? Maybe it'll be worse, maybe it'll be better, but definitely doing the thin brow. It's a lot of maintenance, it is. I have to like pluck my eyebrows all the time or if not pluck, I have to shave them and I just don't feel like doing that all the time. So it's a lot of work. But that is the makeup look. Let's zoom out and see how it goes and then yeah.
Okay, here's the look. I just wanted to show you my alien abduction earrings. Um, yes, these are poor little cowies being blasted up into space. And, um, God, my flyaways are terrible. And this ring right here is awful. But this is the look. Ideally, um, on a daily basis, it would be turned down a little bit. I think just from smudging out the eyeliner instead of doing like a really bold wing liner, that would help. And obviously, not having big false lashes will turn the look down a little bit. Not that I like necessarily avoid looking really bold on a daily basis. It's just that when you wear makeup this bold out, what can happen is it tends to wear off a little bit more noticeably. And so that's the only reason why I may avoid doing really, really loud makeup. But hopefully this was fun. Thank you so much. And if this video is going up, chances are that means that the declutter is swiftly on its way. I'm going to go film it right now. So stay tuned, subscribe, ring the bell if you haven't already. I don't have a regular upload schedule as of now. I'm so, so, so sorry. Um, it's just that with the end of the year approaching and I have a few events I'm doing with my nail shop. Oh, by the way, some fun stuff happening on the nail shop. One, I am sponsoring a Lolita event in Texas. Very, very excited for that because it's going to be a pretty large meetup and I will be giving away some products. Number two, we have started a Gashapon machine event, which is those Japanese, um, like basically like those random vending machine uh, toys where you put a money slot or a token in and you turn the knob and you get like a, a little pod, a prize pod. I bought one straight from Japan. It was very expensive, but I'm going to do a launch for those. And those are going to be a dozen exclusive styles that are limited to the prize machine only. Um, personal care products coming out. So I have some Czech uh, cuticle pushers, some files. Um, I have a hand scrub, which I worked really hard to formulate and it is chef's kiss. It's beautiful. It's honey scented, but vegan. So that's a, a great product. I also have a cuticle oil, cuticle remover. I'm just like really expanding into certain things. And I also offered tarot readings. Um, so if you've been on my channel, chances are you know that I'm really into tarot and I have been giving out kind of like free readings for anyone who wants them, like mini readings. And I think six or eight people have asked for them in total. And so far all the feedback has been very positive. So I decided to open that up because it's something that I wanted to do for a while. Um, and I debated doing it on a different website. I actually even purchased the domain for a witchcraft related shop. Um, and who knows, maybe eventually I will have the bandwidth to expand that to like the actual full thing that it was supposed to be. But right now I think tarot readings are all I can do. And again, subscription nails are being offered. Let me just show you what they look like for this month. So don't mind the bottom set that's inspired by Harry Styles, but the top set, that's the subscription nail for this month. I don't know if you can see, but it's a monarch butterfly with flakes and chromes. And then we've got some holographic nails here, uh, more chrome, more chrome, and then crystal butterfly deta details. So I really, really enjoy this month's theme. I think it's beyond stunning. And the opalescent butterfly wing is something that you really have to see in person because I have flakes. Like I have these rainbow opal flakes that kind of like they are if you know like the, the Danessa Myricks Color Fix Foil, no, Chameleon, what is it What is it called? Like, you know those pots, those chrome pots? That's the same product. It's like multi-chromatic mica that basically flashes a beautiful rainbow. So that's going in the monthly nail kits, cuticle oil, all that stuff um, up on the shop. Very, very exciting. And yeah, I'm thinking of officially closing the Etsy store because it's costing me money every month just to operate. And I don't need Etsy, honestly. They are kind of trash. So I, I'm appreciative of where it got me, but now that I'm here, I don't think I need it anymore. And guys, I believe that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. I love you and I will see you when I see you. Bye.